everyone, and welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. I'm Wendy O'Connell. Even though we are remotely, you can watch almost all of our regular shows uh, that are on, and actually some new ones as well. Uh, the producers um, are working online, and I want to actually just take a minute and thank all of our staff for uploading and downloading and doing all the things that they have to do in terms of uh, operations as well. So thanks to CORE and Nolan and Blasta and Brian for doing all the hard work to get us going and on the air and to keep us on the air as well. Um, so you can just go to BrattleboroTV.org to tune in and you can follow us on Facebook. If you have info, information or PSAs that you'd like to have on the station, just go to info at BrattleboroTV.org. Um, and we are, uh, you'll be able to see all the municipal meetings. Um, the usual energy week is, is still up. Peter Case Fish's uh, call to action as well. He's got over 20 shows talking to people who are on the front lines. All the community um, roundtables, Tim Ash from the Vermont Senate and Montpelier Happy Hour. So tune in and stay tuned. We are here. Um, and we will always be here through thick and thin for you in the community. Going to our show today, our guest is Star Latronica. And Star is the director of our public library here in Brattleboro, Brattle uh, Brooks Memorial Library, right on Main Street that we all know and love. Before she was, um, before she came to Brattleboro, in her career, she served as chair of the John Newberry Award Committee. She served as a panelist for the New York Times Best Illustrated Books for Children. She's a past president of the Association for Library Service to Children, which is part of the ALA, the American Library Association. And she also was a judge for the National Book Award. So Star has been around the block and gratefully for us, she is on our block now. So today I welcome Star Latronica. Hi Star. Hi Wendy, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you on too. Yeah, we've we've been trying to get this to happen for a while now. So yeah, I'm really glad. Um, and you've been at the library now for is four or five years. Four years. Four it's years. It's low. Yeah. yeah it's, it, years. it seems like you've been here for a long time. Actually, I think that you really become such a part of the community so quickly, and brought a real vibrancy to to the whole library. New energy. It's great. It's really wonderful. Um, but before that. Um, you're born in the Bronx, and you actually spent most of your growing up time in the Midwest, in Iowa? I did. Yeah. I did. And Iowa is a great place to grow up. And, um, and one of the things we learned early on in Iowa was when we were growing up there, that Iowa had the highest literacy rate in the country. So everyone was, you know, really, really motivated to be a good reader because we had to maintain that status. That's great. That's great. And so, um, and you moved around a lot as a kid. I did. I did. Um, I had a, uh, you know, I lived in a precarious family situation, as a lot of kids do. And um, so many of those kids, um, I've met so many other kids that have grown up like that. Um, and they really attribute much of their resiliency to having access to wonderful stories and that was the case with me um, I went to 14 different schools before I graduated from high school so we we lived almost every place you can live in Iowa um, from tiny little towns um, where almost everybody was related to my mother to big urban areas like Cedar Rapids where I grew up uh, where I graduated from high school and the one constant was the library and that I could get good books at the library. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the stories, you know, that we had in our childhood are so much a part of us, you know. Um, I remember reading biographies like crazy when I was in elementary school. And I think, you know, that they really shaped a lot of my, um, my images of women and um, role models and that kind of thing too. Um, and the stories too, of course. Um, and so you ended up at um, UC Berkeley. In I did. A really nice time to be there, the late 70s. It was. It was. It's a great time to be there. Um, it was one of those things where you know I read about it, and uh, so I was growing up in Iowa. I read about Berkeley. I thought, oh, 
that's where I need to be. And miraculously enough, I, I got there eventually. Um, and that's where I got, uh, I got my bachelor's and my master's degree at UC Berkeley, which was terrific. Um, it, because it was, there's so much more of an education than you, that you get beyond the university when you live in the Bay Area. Yes, yeah, and you were there, and you majored in library science at that time. Is well, that right? that's what I got my master's in. I got that's my bachelor's in Spanish, um, oh. because I knew, by that time, I knew I wanted to be a librarian, and so I thought, okay, now what could I major in that would really enhance my abilities as a public librarian? I knew I oh. wanted to work with kids, I knew I wanted to work with the public, um, and it was right on the brink where they were really recruiting people who were interested in computers and computer skills, so they were looking for math majors and computer majors, and I knew that wasn't going to be me, <laughs> and so, um, so I thought, okay, well, it, for public service, knowing another language and in California, Spanish would be a yeah. good thing to do. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so you graduated with, in library science. So this was like early 80s by that time. Mm -hmm. And, yes. you know, I wonder if you could um, just speak a little bit to how much library science itself has changed in those years. Oh, my gosh. So much and yet so little. It's really mm -hmm. interesting. Because the things that drew me to being a librarian, the foundations of the profession are still as important and as strong as ever. And that's what's wonderful to see. Um, so it, things like service to all, equal access, no matter a person's socioeconomic status, their age, whatever, you know, we serve all people. And that yeah. was absolutely critical to me. Um, intellectual freedom, that we have all opinions, all ideas, no matter how you may feel about them personally, we represent everything in the public library. And um, uh, privacy issues, that patron confidentiality, that has not changed, that's sacred to librarians. Mm -hmm. So all of those really, really important things we still carry forth. Um, also, uh, I, going back to uh, intellectual freedom, but also just all manner of materials. One of my favorite classes in um, graduate school was on popular culture and how important it is to have popular culture represented in the public library. And I always think that, you know, the public library is shared resources. These are things that the community comes together and purchases and then we all share them. And yeah. part of it is having materials that you wouldn't really want to keep in your house, which might include like a whole lot of Harlequin romances, <laughs> um, but right. you want to enjoy them. And the same with uh, those really expensive, beautiful art books that, you know, it, who has room for them in their house and they're very expensive, but if in the library, we can all share them. Right. So those are that are still the same. Yes. Um, what has changed, of course, we no longer have card catalogs, as lovely as they are as uh, objects. Um, and uh, and actually, I, I used to actually own an oak card catalog, but it didn't make the trip with me from California. Oh, but, oh that's uh, good. But it, it went to a good home. Um, good. And, uh, it, so we don't have card catalogs anymore, but to me, that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> It was, uh, yes, yeah. Um, it at first it was hard to let go. You know, just the the whole sensory experience of filing through those wonderful cardstock um, yes. uh, eggshell colored cards. But oh my goodness, that has freed us up to do so much more. And really, the public. Oh, I remember hours and hours of filing card catalogs or, or the catalog cards and yes. then you would have to file them and someone would have to come by and double check your work. Oh, so right. it just took so much time. Yes. And now we can spend that time developing wonderful programs, learning yeah. about new resources and actually serving people, which is what drew me to, to libraries is the people. Yes. Um, right. So that that has been a wonderful thing, and and cataloging itself, which is absolutely critical to serving the public, because we have to be able to find those resources. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a real art and a science to it, um, and that has. Uh, it, but shared cataloging now has freed up catalog.
bloggers to really do the minute detail and and do that really um, elegant cataloging that that makes books accessible to everybody. Obviously, there are a lot of trades up trade offs. One of which is with time, and I think that. Um, the amount of programs that libraries are doing now is hugely different than it used to be. Right. And again, it comes with that shared resources that right. here's that we can share experiences. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, one of my favorite uh, things to do as a librarian um, was to introduce kids to the library. Yeah. And so just not that long ago, maybe five years ago, I was talking to a group of preschoolers and I was explaining, you know, you can check out books for free, you get a library card for free. And then I explained why that was and that, you know, we all get together and we buy this and then we all get to, you know, check books out. And a little girl raised her hands and she said, that's sharing. <laughs> You're exactly right. That's exactly what libraries are. We're sharing. Right. We're sharing. Um, she really nailed it, and um, and I think if we look at libraries like that, we we share information, we share expertise, and we share experience. And you know, aren't we lucky? Aren't we lucky? And you know, I was thinking uh, just recently. I can't remember where it was. I ran across a picture of the old Brooks Library, which is now a parking lot, which we won't talk about. But anyway, um, thinking of those early libraries and how it was all about being able to share stories. You know, people from the community donating books that they had and so that everybody could read these wonderful stories. So it's kind of, it's not an oral tradition, but it's a very early written tradition, you know. And it used to be the, the pack horse libraries in America and, you know, all of those really primitive ways of getting the word around. Yeah, yeah. And and I, um, before I came here, I actually managed the bookmobile, which went mm -hmm. through towns in upstate New York, which That's was right. still a lot of that, you know, bringing books to the people. Southern Tier is a wonderful area of, of New York. Many people don't know about it, but there's a lot going on there. And you did, you did mostly youth librarian work, is that right? Um, it, at the, in the Southern Tier of New York, I did outreach and youth services. And youth services as well. Yeah. And you've had a focus um, along the way with youth services. I have. It, it is. It's absolutely been the driving force in my life because I know what a difference it made to me as a child that I grew up in, in this, the madness of my household, but adults got me good books to read. They got me stories of people, like you said, the, the biographies, um, uh, people that showed me another way to behave. And mm -hmm. that was a huge difference on my life. And then one day I realized, oh, I could do that for somebody else. And <laughs> Great. It's, it's been absolutely rewarding. I never regretted a minute of being a librarian ever. You know, and I keep trying to talk everybody I know into being it. I mean, if you want to be happy, be a librarian. <laughs> <That's that. laughs> Well, you know, I actually, I ran across a great quote of yours, which, and I can't remember where I found this, but it's that you said, um, correct, correct me if this is incorrect. Um, I am lucky that I've been able to do work that I love in a field which offers tremendous variety, endless evolution, and boundless satisfaction. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> That is exactly how I feel. So great. <laughs> the day. I and you know, and I've always felt so lucky to be um, to be a librarian. But uh, I realized about a couple months ago, I thought, you know, I've, you've always been so lucky, but you really hit the jackpot when you came to Brattleboro. <laughs> yes, let's talk about coming to Brattleboro. So I'm so happy to be here. Uh, we uh, many people have heard me say that you know we tried to move here for 20 years. My husband came through in the late 70s. Um, he's from Massachusetts, and he fell in love with Brattleboro. And he kept telling the whole family, our whole family, we got to move to Brattleboro, Vermont. Now that's a town. And uh, so after we moved to the southern tier of New York, he piled us all in the car one weekend, and we drove up to Brattleboro. It's about a four-hour drive yeah. each way. Yep. And um, so 
we came to Brattleboro. We loved Brattleboro. We just loved it. And we kept coming back and coming back for 20 years. Wow. And, um, you know, so uh, our wedding anniversary and my, um, my birthday are, ra- are around the time of winter carnival. So we would come here and we'd stay at the latches for our anniversary and have a nice celebration. Um, you know, I used to always buy myself a uh, birthday present at Delectable Mountains because that was just such a lovely story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I had, yeah, you know, frequent buyer cards from Mocha Joe's. You know, I was, we were just so Brattleboro. We loved Brattleboro. And luckily, um, I have a colleague who actually lives in Putney, but she works at Keene Library. And she had invited me to come and speak at a conference of librarians. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, Gail, someday I want to move to Brattleboro. And about six months later, she uh, emailed me the link that Jerry was retiring. Uh And and she said, you know, are you ready to move to Brattleboro? And I I am so grateful because I wasn't looking for a job. I loved my job. I had a great job, but this was the only job I wanted. And thank goodness I said something to her because otherwise how I felt on my next trip to Brattleboro, if somebody else's face (laughs) on the page of the paper as the new library director, right? So um, just, you know, a a friend of mine always says, you know, lucky people are social people. So um, Uh we... And we all realize that now, now that we can't be as social as we <laughs> are used to being. That's right. And we, we realize how lucky those connections are. And yes. boy, that one make a difference. Yeah, and you know, um, y- you know, you, the library is a front line in the community and it's a first stop in the community and it's a gathering place and it's all of those things. Um, so I'm sure it was very hard for you to have to close down. It was. Yeah. It was. We, um, I, yeah, we kept trying to string it out as long as we could yeah, and right. as many services as we could. Mm-hmm. And then we finally realized that, you know, it would be at the detriment to the community, to our beloved community, who we care so much about to continue that. But, um, but I just got off a webinar that I was taking, um, put on by the Public Library Association on, you know, moving forward on ways to reopen. So, you know, so we are looking at ways that we're gonna be able to serve the community. Um, it'll be incremental, you know, right. be fixed, just, just like it was when we were closing down. But yeah. we cannot oh. wait, we miss you. We miss oh God. you so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, and we miss you as well. I would love to go back just a little bit to, um, to Berkeley, when you were in Berkeley and being there and, you know, because so many of us who, here at Berkeley or San Francisco during that time, we think City Lights Bookstore, right? Mm -hmm. And so you were able to be there in person a lot, right? I was. And, and it was wonderful to work in Berkeley. I got to work with fantastic people. I got to work with real, I, I, it really formed me as an activist librarian, you know, that again, I, I came I came to the library as a child for the books, but I came to the library as a professional for the people. And, um, and I think probably, you know, you're talking about reading about biography, reading biographies. And I realized I do, I read biographies and I read for character. When I read a novel, I'm, I have to be invested in the characters. That's right. And, and I think it is, it's the people issue. Um, so living in Berkeley gave me a chance to, uh, to really work with some wonderful librarians and of course in an incredible community that loves its libraries and consistently yeah. passes tax increases to pay for their libraries. Yeah. And also you had, you had an enormous amount of characters in that area as well. I did. <laughs> I, did. I used to wear uh, wavy gravy all the time. We'd come and, uh, you know, check books out at our library. Um, I worked with, uh, uh, country Joe McDonald, who became a good friend of mine, um, and uh, his wife, and we had a special celebrity story time. And oh, cool. country, country Joe um, was, you know, agreed to read a story, uh, but he, uh, his wife, my friend Kathy, is a nurse, and he loves nurses. Country uh, Joe is an activist for nurses, and so he wanted to read a Victorian bi- snippet from a Victorian biography of um, Florence Nightingale uh-huh. and, um, so he was the last one to read and it, it's probably good because it was you know Victorian so it was very florid language and 
and also a little gruesome. Because <laughs> they talked about yep. escape to the hospital and everything. And, and the, um, the, par the kids were all a little baffled, I think, but the parents were all <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> Uh, we had great, great, uh, great community participation and yeah. uh, in the library and in the community. I mean, yeah. were, everybody had something to say. And that's why I so adore Brattleboro. When I came to Brattleboro, I thought, oh, my gosh, it's a mini Berkeley. It's a mini Berkeley with the same kind of devotion and dedication of the community, um, mm -hmm. but manageable. You know, whereas Berkeley is, is just too big anymore, yeah. you know, um, uh, but it was too big for me, I should say. Um, and uh, but Brattleboro is like it's got all that, all that energy and, mm -hmm. and all that love for one another and um, and determination to make the world a better place. And it, yeah. and. I've just, every day I feel that. Um, it's interesting because one of my colleagues from the Southern Tier, when I moved here, the next time I moved here, she said, well, you've moved to a much more populous place. And I said, no, <laughs> than Binghamton. And she said, well, I just assumed so because I went on the website and there was so much going on. That's great. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's, I know. And, you know, I think that that's one of the things, you know, since we've been doing this virtually, everybody has talked about, of course, we're in the middle of coronavirus right now and how the community has come together and so quickly and so immediately and so many services that are available. Yeah, it's really, we're showing our stripes in so many ways. Um, um, so, you know, um, I know that you love to read, Star, but what else do you do besides reading and doing all of your library work? So I love to sew. I oh. absolutely love to sew. Uh -huh. um, that's part of growing up in Iowa when I did, you know, we all learned to sew. And, um, and then I found out, you know, you could make crazy outfits that nobody else had if you knew how to sew. Um, and so I do, I love to sew. And once I get started on a project, it's really hard for me to go to sleep. Um, I just want to keep working on it. Oh, uh, that's wonderful. It. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, since moving here, Actually, I haven't had much time to sew, but, you know, I'm hoping, you know, I might be able to squeeze in a little bit of time during these times. Yeah, I hope you can during this time because it would be opportune. Yes, well, you have fabulous outfits. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, now, with you coming here um, and uh, being the director of the library, um, did you come with sort of um, an idea in mind of how you wanted, not that you wanted to change things or anything like that, but just what, what your place would be in the community as the director? Well, I just want, I just want everybody to think of the library first, no matter what they're thinking about. Oh, what's something to do? <laughs> Go to the library. Oh, I need something. <laughs> Can I find that out? Oh, the library. Um, basically, you know, my goal as a librarian is just to infiltrate all areas of the community mm. with the library message. Mm -hmm. So I really, I, I see the library not just as a place, but as a presence in the community. Yes. So that, that everyone is constantly thinking about the library. And I'm so fortunate that this library was so wonderful and so beloved, thanks to my, our wonderful former director, Gary Carboni, yes. and his staff, that that was an easy, um, an easy message to strengthen. Mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. it had such trust and such credibility already. Yeah. So yeah. that was really easy. And then again, because this community is so lively and does really, you know, embrace um, its, it, its resources that uh, it, I've been so lucky that people, you know, really want to be a part of the library and mm -hmm. they want to have the library go to their uh, organizations and they want to bring programs to the library so it's been a just a wonderful give and take um, in the it's so great because yes because uh, the because Brooks is so active and you've got a very strong friends group um, I wonder if you could just give us a snapshot I think a lot of people don't quite know what the friends do but they're oh, they're a big yeah. support where, where would we be without our friends? We get right. help from our friends. A lot That's right. Help, actually. Um, and especially right now, oh my gosh, all you people that are watching Canopy and Acorn TV and, uh, and using all these databases, uh, 
Um, those are all thanks to the friends. And so the friends raise funds to purchase enhancements um, so that we, uh, you know, we have a limited budget. Um, and we, so we're lucky that we have the friends that raise funds to, to purchase Canopy, which is a really, really wonderful thing. If you haven't signed up, sign and that's up. Movies. Uh, that's right. movies. movies. That's movies. 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 And if you haven't seen Lost in Paris, watch Lost in Paris. Oh. Okay. It's so funny. A librarian <laughs> has to give recommendations. That's what you have to do, Star. That's why you're on. <laughs> Lost in Paris is one of my favorites. I had seen it at the Brattleboro Film Festival, actually. And yeah. uh, and the heroine is a librarian. So, you know, of course. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to write it again. Lost, Lost, in, Lost in Paradise? Lost in Paradise. Yeah. Okay. Lost in Paris. We'll, we'll definitely check okay. that out. Um, so, uh, so the friends buy that they they subscribe to Acorn TV, which is British TV series. So you yes. can just kick back and binge watch on that, and and we could not have those things if it weren't for the friends. Yes, um, they also uh, purchase laptops so people can come in and do work in, within the library if mm -hmm. our computers are full or if they need a private space. Um, and they they cover most of the programming, including the first Wednesdays. Oh uh, yeah, are, that's a that's a lot. That's a lot of work. They're busy. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh oh, that's rolling. just that tip of the iceberg. Yeah, they, yeah. These are constantly working to to bring you a better library. It's really yeah. really fun. Well, it it is always a better library. It is always a better library. I remember when I first moved to Brattleboro, we we'd been living out in the the sticks. And our daughter was about two years old. And first thing I did was get a library card. You know, it was so exciting. <laughs> and I think it's still like that for kids. It's still somewhat of a rite of passage. Obviously, Star, at, um, the, the mainstay of libraries is books and stories. So do you have any, any good stories about stories? <laughs> <laughs> I so I was really, really lucky that I got a job as a traveling storyteller um, when I, while I was in library school. So I took a semester oh. off and went and traveled around the East in Ohio and Indiana and West Virginia and Maryland telling stories at school assemblies, which was really fun. Um, and it dawns on me that, you know, really, we are all storytellers. We really are. And this is a great time to share stories. And if you're with somebody, if you're with your kids, tell them those family stories. They're yeah. so much fun. Tell them about crazy Aunt Jane mm -hmm. and tell them about, you know, heroic Uncle Henry. Um, but, you know, really let them know their family history and or just tell them the crazy stuff you did. You know, tell exactly. them the crazy stuff. They love to hear that. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And tell them about the mistakes you made. I, I think yeah. we forget to do that sometimes. And right. then our, our kids have this image of us as being people, perfect people. And right. what a shock. <laughs> what it a shock. Right. Otherwise. <laughs> and so let them know at times you were scared and let them know times that you failed so that they'll know it's okay if they do that too. One thing um, I do want to, I do want to leave with one thing um, before we say goodbye, goodbye. Um, this is an interesting, an interesting little fact about star. Um, many of you know Daniel Pinkwater as an author, a, a very popular, you know what I'm going to talk about, a very popular children's author. And it turns out that she is the namesake for a librarian character in one of Daniel Pinkwater's books. Um, and she is known by Star Lackawanna. That's the name that she's given. And, but she utters these immortal lines. I live to amaze, astonish, and astound. Those are things librarians do well. And that's, that's it's one of my greatest honors, and I, I am grateful every day. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, <laughs> and um, it, it's funny because he called to tell me he was going to do it, and he said, my editor said, I have to call you and get you're okay. <laughs> As if I'd say no. <laughs> he said, well, she's crazy as a bat. I said, all the better. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. From Daniel Pinkwire. And she does. Star Lackawanna wears a, a purple cape and um, rain, rainbow striped leg warmer. Oh, so. very cool. <laughs> Dressed like that, you know. <laughs> That's quite in character. Yeah. That's wonderful, Star. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you, Wendy. This has been nothing but fun. It's really fun. We'll have to do it again. I think you should do a story hour with Peter Fish Case, too. That would be really fun. Yes. Think about that. Okay. All right.
All right. We'll see you soon. Hopefully very soon. Thanks, Wendy. All right. And thanks to all of you for being with us today. Um, it was a pleasure to be here with Star. It's always a pleasure to be here with whoever the guest is. And we will, um, we are keeping on, we are carrying on, and uh, we will be here again next week with another guest. Be sure to tune into BCTV and all the great programs that are still up and running. And thanks so much for being here.